Bike Life is an underground movement which sees motorbikers performing dangerous stunts on public roads. See the police in the bushes behind me! It's become a worldwide phenomenon that started in the US and has now exploded across the UK. They want to label us thugs and we're not thugs. For the riders, it's a way of life, but the police see them as gangs and are determined to crack down on the criminal menace they bring to our roads. They've killed two people in the space of two years on bikes, chasing them. But you're lucky you're a police officer, innit? I'll tell you that now, innit? They can lock up ten people. It doesn't matter. You know how worldwide bike life is. I'm in South East London to meet Wavy, one of the UK's most notorious riders. While I'm on the bike, I don't want my whole face in there. I don't want that on camera, bro. We show respect when we're riding. We, should, we respect the people that are on the, We respect pedestrians. We respect other cars. You know what I'm saying? And we even try and respect the police. We're on the Thamesmead Estate, one of the most deprived places in the UK, where Wavy and other riders regularly take over a strip of road to perform their stunts. But there's a battle brewing with police, who have fears for public safety. It doesn't take long for them to turn up in force. Wavy can't resist a bit of showboating to taunt the officers. They see we're not doing nothing wrong, they send the fucking chopper out. All that taxpayers' money to come out and watch us do a few tricks up and down the road. Because they're not going to catch no one from this. As you can see, everyone's got their faces covered. We're not going to run from them. They've killed two people in the space of two years on bikes, chasing them. Kids under the age of 20. They're the terrorists. They're the hooligans. They're the ones that caused the trouble, not us. Bike life is never going to stop, you know what I'm saying? No matter how many choppers you send, no matter how many police cars you send, bike life is never going to stop. It's true that two riders have been killed whilst being pursued by police, but in both cases, the police say they were responding to reports of robberies by people on mopeds. With the police buzzing around the strip, the guys decide to load up their bikes and head to a nearby flat. Wavy introduces me to fellow riders, Cones and Bubbles. You see the, guy, the, the bus drivers out the window going like that, doing a wanker sign when we drive past. With police pressure mounting, the guys are feeling defensive. In the paper, they're all drug dealers. We're not drug dealers, I'm in a work all day. Do you think that people think that you're all criminals good. riding around with stolen exactly, bikes? Exactly, My bike's bought and paid for, I own it outright. If yeah. anyone steals a bike, it's the fucking police. They're the, yeah. They steal our fucking bikes. Yeah, real. I see them tearing around the streets, popping the wheelies, and they think you're criminals. So police rolled up next to man, and the policeman said, I hope you fall off and die, and s spun off. Going through puddles and trying to splash the bikes with puddles and shit, do you know what I mean? Trust me, they're scumbags, man. People think we're in danger in the public. I'm not gonna lie, there is scatty riders that jump on and off pavements. When we ride, it's like we're legit, but we're just doing wheelies. We're doing like 30, 40 mile an hour wheelies, even maybe even slower, do you know what I mean? What happens if a kid runs out from behind a car? You know what what I mean? happens if a kid runs out behind a car and a bus is coming? What happens if a kid runs out behind a car and another car's coming? If a kid runs out in front of you, what can you do about it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, what happens? For people that don't know the scene, for people that have never ridden a bike, they're going to be like, these guys are putting themselves in danger. Why do you keep saying we're putting ourselves in danger? Because, you, well, you kind of are. Well, Imagine you've done me. nothing all your life, you've played it safe all your life, and then you get run over by a bus life leaving your house. Risk. How would you, how, you, your soul leaving its body would be like, you wanker, you wanker, you've wasted me all my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm out here living. Wavy is meeting his brother at a boxing gym. I tag along to find out what drives him to take such big risks. Come to see my little brother, striving to be a professional boxer, training hard and that. And I'm just trying to be a professional rider, you know what I'm saying? Professional stunt rider. That's what our goals are, you know what I'm saying? We just want to turn pro in everything we do. Just go hard or go home, innit? This is my little brother. Jordan, show them how you hit that bridge. So casual. Well, I always used to try and copy him on the pedal bikes, you know, trying to do my own wheelies and stuff, but it just never happened. <laughs> From our dad, I took the riding skills and he just took the boxing skills. He's got the more disciplined side of things. I was the reckless side of things. <laughs> And when I went to secondary school, I met the wrong people and I was doing the wrong things and I didn't have time for boxing no more. Basically, when we was younger, everyone used to like steal mopeds and steal cars and shit. 
One time I was on a pizza bike, I looked to my right, and my mum was sitting at the lights, with my dad in the passenger seat, sitting at the lights, the first car. They're like this. Watch me go past. Literally, like, I'm looking at them like, phones ringing, you know what I'm saying? I got home, I was like, that was not me. I was at school all day. I was at school, all day. you know what I'm saying? Like, denied they, it. They knew. They knew it was me, yeah. Wait, do you seem to like to do things that relieve stress, like pushing your back, yeah. riding your bike? Relieve stress, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want me to tell you? Well, what is it? What, what's so special about your life that you need to relieve stress all the time? No one wants to pay me for anything. Everyone wants everything off me for free. It's stressful. Even though many people see bike life as a menace, Wavy tells me there's another side to it, which I start to see the next time I'm on the estate. So do you try and unload as fast as you can? You've got to get your bike out of the van and get away from it, lock it, fill up and keep it moving. Don't give the police any chance to stop you? No. I'm surprised to see young kids there watching the riders perform their stunts. I ask them why they come down to watch. What do you think to the bike life? Great. Wheelie, that's what they do, that's their thing. They're just sick at riding. It's just a good environment, like, to be round to me, like, because I love motorbikes. We just come down here to watch and have a bit of fun and learn tricks when we drive motorbikes, when we ride motorbikes. What does your mum think about it? She, she thinks it's all right. And she's OK with you, like, coming down here and seeing yeah. these guys? And... Yeah. She's all right with that, because, like, she knows, kind of, like, yeah. It's like they like it more than us, do you know what I mean? Like, like I said, when I was that age, 12, nines and shit, all I was thinking about was bikes, do you know what I mean? And when I see bikes, I would be running to see that person on a bike if I hear them over the field. Do they teach you things then? Yeah, Colin's teaching me stuff all the time. Popping wheelies, stuff like that. Whenever I see him, he just says to me, try this young cones and stuff like that. So, I try it. They're going to be the next ones out killing the bikes when we're too old to hurt ourselves. They're going to be the ones we're watching. We've got to show the kids love as well, man. What were you like before you started riding? Uh, I, don't, I didn't even care about school. I didn't even really want to go, so now I just... So as soon as I get home, I do work, at my, I do go, I go to school, do my work, come home, get dressed, go straight on my bike and wheelie around with my mates. So if I had a stressed out school, it would calm me down going on my bike. They look up to us, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's more positive than looking up to a gang member or whatever, you know what I'm saying? In America, it's guns down, bikes up. Out here, nice down, bikes up, same thing, you know what I'm saying? Teach kids about bikes, they'll never have money for drugs. These things ain't cheap, mate, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> the more time I spend on the Thamesmead estate, the more the bike life scene surprises me. It's clear the boys on the estate see the older riders as stars, but what I wasn't expecting was that the riders spending so much time teaching them new skills. Another big surprise is when Wavy tells me he's treating himself with a trip to Miami. But once again, it's all about bike life. Well, boy, this is my second trip to the US. So, going to Miami this time for the MLK ride out. Yeah, one of the biggest ride outs of the year. There's gonna be hundreds and hundreds of bikes there. South Beach is the spot. Look, there's people riding around with no helmets on. Wavy might be one of the top riders in the UK with over 50,000 followers on Instagram, but the American scene is so much bigger. See, Miami weekend is the weekend. Hundreds of riders from across the states take over the Miami streets on Martin Luther King Day. It's not only the place to be seen, but also a great event to show off their skills via social media. But for Wavy to take part, he needs a bike. After traveling so far, he doesn't want to miss out on the main event. Everyone's bike's booked up from early, so you got to know if that person's got the bike or not, you feel me? Especially if you're coming from fucking London. Desperate to ride, Wavy is turning to other riders to see if anyone can loan him a bike. Hey, listen, I'm going to just go to Jimmy's crib, bro. I want to see if there's a bike there for me, man. I need to ride, fam. Fed up with waiting, Wavy. Yeah, man, I can't wait, bro. I'm out here to ride, like, I didn't come out here. To stand outside shit. So Wavy, you riding? Maybe. Hopefully. What did the homeboy say? No. Nah. A rider Wavy knows through Instagram finally pulls through. Look, this is my bro K Miles, yeah? Har what's it? Harlem. Where are you, Queens? Bronx. 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 
Get me BX to fucking 305, North London to the 305. Respect, Trust me. Bright spring bonds holding me down. So we're doing it, trust me. You brought a bike from fucking all the way from NY to Miami just for me to ride. Having got himself a bike, Wavy finally gets to ride. Seeing Wavy on his bike, I'm beginning to understand why he takes such extreme risks on the road. It's what we love to do, isn't it? It's what, it's what makes us feel most alive, isn't it? You don't, feel, you don't feel more alive than when you're dancing with death. But Wavy's Miami ride doesn't last long, as the police are out in force. It was only for like 20 minutes, man. They had task force out. Undercover police cars parked at fucking all the gas stations that parked up near them. So when they saw the bikes pull in, they just swerved out and then it was all mad. It was all mad yesterday. People was getting, people was getting fucking bike taken left, right and center. And there is worse news. Yes, remember, Shani yeah. fell like an hour ago. He had to go to the hospital. You witnessed an accident. What happened yeah, there? Uh, I see a guy crash his bike and basically, I don't, I don't know, apparently, apparently he died. Um, but yeah, he was, uh, he crashed his bike right in front of me, basically. Does that not make you think that you're taking your life in your hands when you ride? Yeah, of course, I know that though, but I, listen, everyone ain't me. Certain people have got it, certain people haven't got it, you know what I'm saying? No matter what he was doing, nobody deserves to go out like that, you know what I'm saying? So, he came out here to have fun and didn't make it home. Who knows if he has a family, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like some, some, he didn't make it home. He didn't make it home, it's fucked up. Back in the UK and the Thamesmead estate has been attracting riders from across the country. The increased action has brought more police attention. So Wavy is looking for a new spot to ride. It's not always been like this. So what's happened to make it like this now? There's some dickheads that don't know what they're doing and just want to cause trouble, kicking police cars and all that bullshit. What do you look for, like, when you're looking for a new strip? You can ride there at night, that's the best. If it's lit up and it's smooth, away from houses, where it's going to be least people could, like, complain, you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to see if we can go to, like, a different strip, in it, Change it up a bit. Because it's getting a bit hot there. Every time we go there, police fun. So is that what you have to do then? You have to keep finding new strips? I try to. I'm not out here to terrorise the police. I've been looking at this one here. Wavy leads us into an industrial estate. That's a private road as well. These are all private roads here as well. For riders, private roads make better strips, as they believe police can't make an arrest without a complaint from the landowner. I don't know. I like this. I think this one's calm, man. I've heard that Cones is in trouble and could be facing serious jail time because of bike life. Basically, uh, I went up to Manchester. He was having a little ride around on the street and then the police come, started following us in helicopters and all that. The chase went on for three hours. Obviously, yeah, I'd got caught. One of the police officers said that I actually ran over his foot, then I tried to ride back to, to run him over. So that's why it's been transferred to Crown Court, but that's basically a lie, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't use my bike as a weapon against police or anyone. The, the case don't look too good because of what the police officer's saying. So I'd do anything not to get a custodial sentence right about now. I've pled guilty, I've put my hands up to what I've done, but I've always been brought up that riding bikes or whatever is not a serious crime. You can make it serious like going on the roads and getting into crazy chases and yeah, if you crash into someone, it's a serious crime. But to me, I've not looked at bike life like it's a serious crime. 27 year old Cones has a young daughter and with the prospects of going to prison, does he really feel bike life is worth the risk? Do you ride every day? No, I don't ride every day. I, I try to ride as minimum as possible now because uh, you know, I live on the estate where we ride, so I'm well known around here. I can see even with this, there's a, there is a lot of risks to it. And me personally, I'm taking a lot of risks. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, my flat, if I get caught for riding, I lose my flat, I go back to jail. Do you know what I mean? It's gonna affect my daughter and stuff if I go back to jail. So yeah, I'm taking a lot of risks, but at the end of the day, I love this. They literally have to take my arms so I can't grab a back. Do you know what I mean? Before I stop riding. Talking to Cones, I can see how much bike life means to him, despite the trouble he's in. 
He loves riding and the thought of giving it up is killing him. Outside, he introduces me to the mechanic of their group. I'd do anything for these boys. Oh, it's that family, isn't it? 23 year old Liam, a plumber, also has a family and he too has something to say about the police. I'm not a criminal. I'm a, I'm a man with kids and misses. I've got, I've got shit going on in life, you know what I'm trying to say, but I just love riding my bike. Today's ride will have to wait as the cat and mouse game with the police continues. Just another day in Thames me to chop the birds out. If they're looking for someone on a motorbike, they should be putting their money to better use. Once the coast is clear, they make their way through the estate to the strip. The strip is usually quiet, but it's still a public road. There are learner drivers and pedestrians who find themselves getting in the way. The situation is far from ideal. I've heard bikers say they need a proper place to ride, but I'm unsure how this will ever happen. Liam is quick to defend the riders and their reputation as a public nuisance. They want to label us thugs, yeah, when we're not thugs. That's, that's, we ain't thugs. No one can take this away from me. Otherwise, jog on. That's the way I look at it. No disrespect to anyone, but we're not kids. We're just, we're just having fun, releasing that inner stress. I don't want to go home and take stress out of my family, so, so I'll take it out on this bad boy here. How is that a little, little one? Don't get me wrong, you have to be careful, because if I hurt myself, I can't go to work and I can't feed him. I have to always think about them, you know? Like, this is my freedom, this is me, this is my time, but... But I've still got them on my mind. But this is bike life. This is, I love it. You know what I'm trying to say? I love this shit. The riders all seem to love the risks of riding, but I wonder if there is anything that could ever stop them. The next time I see Liam, he is in hospital. Can't really see the full extent, but my bones come through my foot. While riding the strip, Liam came off his bike after hitting another rider. So I'm just here a couple more days and I'll be riding soon. What's going to happen with like work and stuff? I'm self-employed, so now this has done me. No, like, I can't even earn a penny. I've got friends, I've got family support, which I'm very grateful for, but being a man, like, that depresses me because I can't earn my money. I'm, I'm fucked, basically. There's no insurance, there's no payout, there's nothing. It's just suffer. But this is, like I say, this is, this is the risk we're all taking. And like, this is the risk that, yeah, we are aware of, but we don't really think of. So I want people to see this and know that we have to deal with stuff like this to get to the level we're at. Do you think if it was somewhere for you to ride, this might not happen? Yeah, no, I don't think, I know. If we had somewhere properly to go, yeah, supervised proper place, this wouldn't happen. None of this would happen. But like I say, that's the risk we take. Bike life, like, bike life until I'm dead, you know? I'm not, I'm not stopping. Sunday is usually a big day for the riders at Thamesmead. But today, something is different. It seems as though Wavy was right to start avoiding the strip because police are here and are carrying out a major crackdown. <laughs> What's going on? We're down the strip waiting for the bikes, but loads of police turn up and they're just blocking the roads off. He's over there and then the bikes don't want to get caught, so he's obviously gone back because he's on his own. It's unusual to see the street so quiet, but police have blocked every entrance to the estate in a major operation. I don't really see the point in the police trying to stop them. What's, they're not doing any harm. There could be people out there just shooting, robbing all these houses, burning down and all that stuff like that and then spend it on there, like, look, like this here. And then they come down here and then just start spoiling all their fun for no reason. And they just get annoyed with it. That's why they argue about it, by saying, give us somewhere to ride. It's true, though. With no one on the strip, I take a ride with Bubbles to find out what's going on. So, obviously, they've got some big operation going on, but they've been pulling up the motorbikes today. But it's not long before we attract attention ourselves. Now we've been uh, stopped by the police. The police are behind us, yeah. This is, uh, this is John from the BBC. OK, mate. OK, what, well, can you tell us why you stopped us, please? We have been stopped because of the bike life sticker on Bubble's car. Whilst we are split up, the police do a search of the vehicle. After finding nothing, we are let go. Just got stopped by the police. 
and now they're sort of like they went over the car but obviously the police got a big operation going on as you can see look we're back on the strip and the, more police it looks like they've shut it down today no bikes are coming over here at all because the police have locked off all the roads the police are taking a zero tolerance approach towards anyone that looks like they could be part of bike life the moped rider has been stopped due to a faulty mudguard. Well, nothing wrong. Right. It is roadworthy. It's got three years warranty. It's got three years MOT. It's got three years tax. It's got three years everything with it. This is a highlight of yours that day, and it come and bully me. Like this, this, like there's the people going to bur robbing shops and burgling people and that. And you can go and stop them right now. But you've got one, two, you've got three cars and a right van driving up and down it just for us. Come on, bro. Really? This is not. We're not causing trouble. This is keeping us out of trouble. I'm in here. My bike's all legit, and now they're telling me it's not legit. They are telling me that my bike is not legit on the road, even though I have insurance, MOT, tax, everything. They're telling me the front wheel's out of line. They're telling me everything. They're just liars. They just lie, man. Look, they're going to try to take it off me. I don't know what they're going to do. Because it makes you feel better when you go home and sleep at night, yeah? Sweet, man. You don't need all this police for one bike and a couple of push bikes. The police say the bike's not roadworthy. They think the front brake is defective. <laughs> you just not just you just bullies, innit? Billy Billy's. Well, if I chuck down the floor, you can do me flipping. Don't be done. They give the rider two hours to get home, and the bike will need a new MOT before he can legally ride it again. That's your proof, you know. You're lucky you're a police officer, innit? I'll tell you that now, innit? You know that. Stop bullying, you stupid. It can't be denied that the police have made a big difference to the Thamesmead estate today but I can see how angry some of the young men now are. Mums don't love ya! I asked the police about this. They won't appear on camera, but in a statement they tell me that dangerous and reckless riding has been affecting the safety of the community and that they have made five arrests for offences including being unfit to drive and other traffic violations. I find out one of those arrested is Cones, who was visited by the police at his home and immediately sent to prison. I was meant to meet Combs down there on Sunday, but I heard he got arrested Sunday morning, you know what I'm saying? Like, police, they came early Sunday morning, kicked, raided his house, basically, and arrested him for riding a dirt bike on swell rope, because he's on a ban. It's messed up what they've done. They raided him when, when it was just him and his six-year-old daughter in bed. Exactly that. It's like mad. going to traumatise a six-year-old girl who's going to see her dad getting arrested at six years old over him riding a bike. Now, people are going to wonder why she hates police all her life. <laughs> Trust you know what I'm saying? Me. That's why. Because they came in and they took her dad away from her while he was looking after her. Strange men for came in the house. Bikes. Not even for a murder, for, for riding it's crazy. his bike. The police say Combs was arrested because they see him as one of the main bike life organisers on the estate. Do you think it would help if you tried to open up a dialogue with the police? If you tried to speak to the police and say, look, give us, just, just give us some... Tried it. You tried that? What, what happened We always there? try things like that. Ah, uh, we'll be in touch with you. Ah, uh, we'll... they're enjoying that. They love that. They love chasing you. They get a thrill from it. Just like we get a thrill from wheeling down the road, they get a thrill from chasing down a bike. You know what I'm saying? But what's the future for bike life if the police carry on like this? It's going to carry on going the same way it's going now, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This doesn't... This is not a scratch on the surface. You don't understand. They've locked up one person through bike life, or they lock up... They could lock up 10 people. It don't matter. Do you know how worldwide bike life is? Saudi Arabia, Africa, Jamaica. They see us as a gang. We're not a gang, we're a movement. Liam is out of hospital and his injuries have earned him respect with the boys. How do they do that? Disgusting. How do they do that? See, you know he's a true rider. I head over to his house to check in on him. How you doing, mate? You all right? Happy, mate. How you doing? Good. How's your foot? It's getting better. It's getting better, mate. Are well, you worried that you could be nicked soon? In a way, yeah. Like, they could. They could nick anyone. But at the same time, like, like what can I do? Like, I can't be worried about it. Like, it's, yeah, I'm worried in a way, but give me somewhere to go and I won't ride there. Obviously, I understand they've got a duty to do and whatever else, but I believe they're doing it in the wrong way. But do you think that you might be trying to get your message to them or, or to people in the wrong way by riding the public roads? Ah, uh, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, we are. Like, we shouldn't be doing it, and we know that. I worry that like, a kid's going to step out into the road and want to be... Ah, uh, yeah, like, I worry about that all the time. Don't get me wrong. 
Like, it can happen. My missus takes my dogs for walks, my son. I don't want to be them under danger by any people riding dirt bikes. I want him to do wheelies and all that if he wants, but it's not something I'd ever push him into, though, because it's a dangerous sport. Hello. Are you going on the motorbike? What is motorbike doing? Let's go, bang! Bang, bang! Bang, 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 Right, he wants me to get off because he wants to do it himself. See what I mean? Look, see? This is not even two yet. When's Charlie going to get his first bite? I, I keep saying for his third birthday, but I'll probably end up getting it before. See yeah. on? Help me service it, look. It's in my chain, look. See, like, he really wants to do it. He, know, he knows about tools and he tries to help like it as if he's fixing it, so I let him think he is, do you know what I mean? His mum hates it because we get all filthed up and dirty, but he's a kid, and he? He's a boy. I wouldn't ever let him get hurt. All right. I'm going to take him in anyway. Look at the old look. There's the chopper out now. Someone's riding. Someone's probably out riding now. For many of the young men on the estate, bike life is something they are born into, and while Liam can see the dangers it might pose, I can't ever see him giving it up. I catch up with Cones' girlfriend, Kirsty, to see how Cones' prison stretch is affecting her and their daughter, Lily Mae. Do you understand why you rise? I don't and I don't. It must be the adrenaline. It's in his blood. He's, his parents were both riders. I think he probably had his first bike when he was probably younger than our daughter is now. Is it hard sharing Luke with, with that side of his life? It can be, but I don't know, I suppose if you don't let him go do what he wants to do, that wouldn't really be fair. I obviously look after our daughter and he obviously goes out and has fun. <laughs> and is it hard now he can't be there for her? Yeah, of course it is. Because now I have to look after her and try and struggle with work, but that's life. Life could get even tougher for Kirsty because Combs is facing another 18 month sentence for the Manchester case. If the sentencing doesn't fall in Combs' favour, then that'll affect you in quite a big way, won't it really? Yeah, no, of course it will, because then I'll be left on my own with my daughter again. It seems the police operations have worked as the strip is still empty with no signs of bikes at all. The police are saying they'll continue to crack down on any bikers in the area in an effort to shut down bike life for good. People in that area might be like, the police seem to have done a good thing here and they've, they've, they've stopped the bikes from coming. They're here. Well, they're in for a shock. <laughs> you know what them ones? They're in for a shock because the police didn't do nothing of the sort. We decided not to go there anymore. And it was a decision that we made. We liked to find a new strip anyway. Going to the same place is boring. Combs is out of prison. He served eight weeks inside for his London arrest and got another driving ban with suspended sentence for the previous Manchester case. He seems relieved to have avoided any further jail time. It gives you enough time to reflect on your life and it has made me think when I come out, I'm going to do things different. You know, I'm not going to be out there getting my face out there, doing wheelies up and down in places where I know that it's, it's a risk of me getting caught. I have to keep my nose clean for 18 months or I'm going away for 15 months. All I want to do really is just dedicate most of my time to my family. I've got a lot of making up to do. Just try and stay out of trouble, but I'll be back on the crosses again. Don't worry about that, do you know what I mean? As soon as my band's out of the way, Thamesmead, wow, they're, they're going to have the worst day of their life when my band's over, because I'm going to be out there absolutely taking the piss. Despite all the battles with police over Sewell Road, Wavy is still 100% bike life and has already found a new place to ride. It's not like, oh, I'm pulling out my bike to come and terrorise your street and get in your way, be a nuisance, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is I'm coming out to train, I'm putting my, my work in, you know what I'm saying? That like, if you're a boxer, you're going to go to the gym and train, spar, hit the bag, you know what I'm saying? If you're a runner, you're going to go to the track and run and train, you know what I'm saying? If, if, you're, if you're a swimmer, you're going to go to the pool and train, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I'm a rider. I need somewhere to train. If you ain't got the resources around you, you've got to make it happen. That's why we have to hit the streets. The only way I'm going to stop riding is when I'm buried, when I'm six foot. You know what I'm saying? When I'm six foot deep. Fight life, isn't it? To the death of me, to the fullest. That's it. Simple.